sermon, is, which is after I sent the information to our secretary for the bulletin, I changed scripture passages. So what's in your bulletin is not correct, but what's on the screen is. It's John chapter 15, I thought, fit better with the mood for today. This is Jesus, where Jesus is doing, I am the vine and you are the branches, uh, message right before he goes to the crucifixion on the night of the Last Supper. No idea what page it is in your pew Bible, but I'm sure you can find John 15 if you want to follow along. If not, it's up here. But this is a familiar passage uh, to us all. Listen now to the Word of God. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love me one another. This is the word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Set up here to operate. Y'all want to see things? Y'all flip down to the front row of the way. We're now at the 15th anniversary of September 11th. And the big question that comes up is, where was God when evil strikes? Where was God on that day? We'll look at that today. But the first question that usually comes up when people talk about September 11th, if you are alive then, because we've got to remember, as some of our youth told me this morning, our freshmen in high school this year is the first group uh, that has come along after the events of 9-11. So this is ancient history to Megan and uh, Meredith and uh, some of our girl scouts and stuff like that. But it is still very potent to us. And uh, uh, it's something that was captured live. If you want to see it all in sequence, Fox News tonight at 9 o'clock is doing a rebroadcast of all the events without commercial of what happened that day. So it's a very powerful thing that they do at major anniversaries of 9-11. I recommend that. But on this day, 15 years ago, 19 terrorists hijacked four airliners to destroy three targets. The World Trade Center, both towers, the Pentagon, and we believe the Capitol was the intended goal of Flight 93. We all remember it, and that question comes up, where were you when it happened? Kind of like if you were around when Kennedy was shot, the Space Challenger blew up. These are earth-shattering events. Maybe if you go back to D-Day, uh, that's for a different era and generation there. Uh, I was teaching the men's Tuesday morning Bible study at Low Country Presbyterian Church in Bluffton, South Carolina. Bluffton's the mainland town right before you go on to Hilton Head uh, down on the coast. And... Uh, We'd only been at the church about six weeks. We'd moved in August to start the pastorate there from Charlotte, and uh, we were just getting to know people. But our secretary, Billy Joe, came and knocked on the door and said, something strange has happened in New York. I uh, just wanted to alert you about some plane has flown into the World Trade Center. And then a few minutes later, she came back and said, a second trip plane has flown into the other tower. You all probably need to break and uh, come check this out. And we did. On that day, 2,996 died, many more were wounded, many thousands of lives were shattered, the World Trade Center area and the Pentagon were badly damaged, and our country and world history has not been the same. So people ask, where was God when this happened? And we all, many of us stood in front of TVs that day watching these events unfold. We couldn't believe what was happening, or even if we didn't see it right there, we saw it later that day in the replays, like the plane here flying into the second tower. Uh, and uh, some people still don't believe this happened. 
And they say it was all sorts of crazy theories and stuff like that. Uh, but there are no easy answers to the question, where is God when evil strikes? Why did God let this happen? Why did so many have to die, especially when this was done in the name of religion? This was supposedly the Islamic faith at work. So, uh, doesn't God care? Well, I've got some answers to those questions. I'll tell you where God was. God was with the passengers on the planes and the workers in the towers, even if they didn't survive that day. God embraced them and guided the believers safely home to their eternal rest in his love. But that was actually much fewer than what's intended that day, and I'll get to that later. God was also with the workers in the towers in the Pentagon and guided many of them to safety, like Roberta's sister and nephew. Do any of the rest of you all know anybody who was there that day? Several of y'all did. Uh, so we have immediate contact uh, of the 50,000 people that could potentially have been in the trade towers that day, 20% uh, of the country has direct contact with somebody who was there. That's the way that the geometry works, uh, the degrees of separation. So uh, a lot of people were directly impacted by having friends and loved ones there. Uh, but God gu uh, guided many of them to safety. He also gave them the strength to help each other and leave each other out. And we can go back and read the countless weird stories of people who heard somebody banging over here and were let out or uh, somehow they pushed on a door that nobody else could open it and open into the stairwell. And, uh, there were all sorts of acts of deliverance. God was on United Flight 93 with Todd Beamer and the passengers there. Uh, which was hijacked to believe, we believe, to go into the Capitol building or the White House or some other target in Washington. They got word of what happened at elsewhere, and 40 of them decided that since they were going to die anyway, they may as well take out the hijackers and stop that plane from reaching its intended target. Let's roll, they said. And their friends and family members heard it on their phones as they charged down the aisle. Apparently, the hijackers crash the plane rather than let them take back control of it, and that's why they perished in the field in Sharksville, Pennsylvania. God was with the first responders, the police, the firemen, the EMTs, the Port Authority officers who heard the call and rushed into harm's way, many of them giving their lives to save their fellow citizens. They lay down their lives, as our passage talks about. God was with the workers in the Pentagon who jumped into action to save their fellow citizens uh, that day. God was with the nation and the nation, our national leaders to draw everyone together, and God gave them resolve to move ahead with life and not let the terrorists win. God was with the churches and people of faith who prayed for the slain and prayed for the wounded and prayed for the responders and follow-up workers who stayed on duty for days and weeks and months afterwards. God was in all these places. God was there. But God can't stop evil people when they are determined to carry out uh, a, a, a horrendous plot like this. Uh, here's a quote from Matt Chandler, pastor of Big Mega Church out in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. You may not be able to see this, but uh, I'll read it to you. Um, that, uh, you know, people say, where was God when this happened? If there was a God, he would have stopped all this. Well, he says, every time an airplane goes down, you'll find somebody on Larry King or some other show talking about, where was God? They'll mention 9-11 over and over. Where was God on 9-11? Where was he? <coughs> Here's where the blasphemy occurs. You know that up until that point that there had been nearly 100 years of air travel where no terrorist hijacked a plane and crashed it into a building? And no one ever went on the Larry King show to complain about it. No one ever went on, uh, no one uh, went to, 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 to a talk show and said, how awesome is God that for the last 100 years, nobody hijacked a plane and crashed it into a building. Out of the tens of thousands of flights every day, millions of flights every year, over 100 years. How awesome is he? How gracious is he? How beautiful is he that protected us in such ways? So he gets absolutely no credit for the beautiful day and every ounce of the blame for the horrific one. Blasphemy, yeah, that's who we are. 
and we're unapologetic about it. Well, Matt Chandler's a little hard there at the end, but uh, I think you get the point here. We know that God is with us and for us, even in times of horrendous tragedy there. And God was there in many ways, in many places. Um, I think God was especially there in the heroic actions of the first responders that day. Men and women who jumped to action and rushed into harm's way. They helped put the fires out, lead people to safety, treat the wounded, preserve order, and limit life as much as possible. And the sad thing that the bulk of the firefighters who died were very close to the door. They almost made it out. They were only 75 or so feet away from getting out themselves, the 300 or so that died in the tower's uh, collapse. Uh, so uh, they almost pulled it all off, and it's tragic that they didn't, uh, but we are grateful that 340, 343 firemen were willing to give their lives and 71 law enforcement officers that day. <coughs> And again, our scripture passage that we read tells us that greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, on a day like today, this was an appropriate image to use for that. Uh, the soldier leaning on the Vietnam Memorial or some similar memorial, touching the wall and seeing the reflections of those who gave their lives to preserve his. Some of y'all have been in combat. Some of y'all been in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places, and some of you all are here today because of the sacrifices of others. We remember that, and we are grateful for that. That's the love of Jesus being shown. This is what the Bible talks about with agape love. The Greek language is different words that we translate as love. Erotic, romantic love is different than this kind of sacrificial love, uh, which the Greek word again is agape. Agape love puts the needs and well-beings of others first. Starts with your friends, as Jesus says. Greater love has no one this. Someone will lay down his life or her life for their friends. Uh, and Jesus said, I'm your friend and you're my friend. And I lay down my life for you. But I can also extend from friends out to the general public. Police officers don't know everyone they're going to risk their life for, or EMTs, or firefighters, nor do soldiers. Sometimes soldiers know that they're risking for their life for the jerks back home who won't stand up for the national anthem or salute the flag at a football game. But you do it anyway because it's protecting their right to act like a jerk is more important than sacrificing their rights. So um, that's what we do. And uh, that's why the military serves, and we are proud of it. Uh, again, this is the love Jesus had for us when he went to the cross to die as the sacrifice for our sins. Jesus went in our place. These responders went in the place of others. And uh, they embodied the same love as they dashed into harm's way. And so we recognize and salute all who serve selflessly today and in the past. Thank you for your service, your sacrifices and for the sacrifices your families make with you. Because sometimes the spouses carry a big burden as the one out there in harm's way. And so we salute them as well. And these people are all models for us. Now there's one more miracle that happened that day that I've not seen many people pick up on, but this is the thing that really jumps out to me that day. And... Uh, uh, as we look at a couple of different pictures. I was thinking about doing a slideshow behind this, but uh, uh, y'all probably focus too much on the pictures and not listen to me. Uh, so, uh, but this is, I think, the real miracle of September 11th, that God was with the World Trade Center buildings and held them up and didn't let them fall immediately. You know, this, you can see this picture here. Or this one here, the explosion that happened after that second plane hit. The attack was time for the start of the workday when each building will be full with up to 25,000 workers in each tower. And the intention was that the top towers would immediately break in two and crumble and fall and take out all 25,000 in each building, 50,000 or more total. And these are 1,300 
foot tall buildings that should topple over and take out 1,300 feet of other buildings in any uncontrolled direction. Uh, you know, uh, so all total, 50 or 75 or 100,000 people were supposed to die immediately as those centers of Western commerce were weaponized to take out everything in their path. But what happened? Did those buildings fall? Not right away. They absorbed the impact of the planes much to everybody's uh, disbelief. Nobody would think that we could have just absorb that plane going in like that and continue to burn like this for some time. They swayed. They shook like Roberta talked about feeling up there that day, but they held firm. 25,000 people rushed, rushed out of each of those buildings to safety for about an hour. One building stood, I think, 59 minutes, the other about an hour and 15 minutes. But that allowed most people to get out. Uh, when the buildings came down, which direction did they go in? Would anybody have ever predicted that a 1,300 foot building would come straight down in its own footprint and not fall over? That's just unheard of that something like that would happen. The heat from the build, burning jet fuel and debris melted the inner columns and the buildings began to collapse straight down, each floor pancaking down onto the one below it. And the result is that they came down in their own footprints. They didn't fall on top of other buildings around them, though the dust coated the whole city. What was the result? Out of 100,000 potential casualties that day, how many died at that spot? 2,192 civilians, 343 firemen, and 71 law officers. That's far short of what Osama bin Laden and the 19 hijackers had ever intended. And that is a number that I think all you can write this up to is this is the hand of God specifically intervening to prevent greater loss of life. This has always stood out to me as the miracle of September 11th. Uh, for the 10th anniversary, I tried to put this into uh, poetic form uh, and never really used this anywhere, but I want to share it today. I call this the miracle of uh, September 11th as we remember the events of that day. Uh, I'll leave that picture up there as the buildings are coming down. But this is how I try to capture it in kind of a longer uh, poetic form. And I've got copies of this up here if you like it. We'd like to pick up one of them. Listen to this. On September the 11th, 19 men chose to fly and turn commercial airplanes into missiles in the sky. Angry men with broken hearts and an angry view of God who sought to wreak destruction and destroy the land of life. What was their evil goal in this tragic, fateful day? That 50,000 plus should die in the World Trade Center's day. Five or 10,000 more should perish at the Pentagon. A thousand more would likewise die if the Capitol were gone. They took control of airplanes and forced them where to go. To the place we know today is New York's ground at zero. They struck their targets with deadly aim and demonic accuracy. And in their dying breaths, they were hoping they would see huge skyscrapers split and shatter and crumble to the ground, killing all who worked inside and many more all around. Towers lean and tumble in a horrible production, kicking out more buildings and lives in a great mess of destruction. But something unplanned happened. The buildings did not fall. They billowed with deadly smoke, but stood there straight and tall. They shook and swayed and rumbled as they took that deadly blow, but they did not lean and tumble as the terrorists had hoped. An hour or two they lingered while thousands safely fled until they made it out and to the ground it sped. Heroes rushed up the stairs to help save many more before the fire inevitably brought the buildings to the floor. In Washington, the plane hit, but the Pentagon didn't crumble. 
that took the massive impact, but only one section tumbled. The rest stood strong and firm as rescuers hustled in to save the lives of many trapped by the trouble, by the rubble there within. <coughs> Flight 93 was likewise set to take the Capitol building out when brave men rushed the cockpit with a fury and a shout. Let's roll, they cried as they chose to give their lives to stop the crime in progress so innocents wouldn't die. The miracle of September 11th is the plan that fell so short of the massive scale of murder that was its author's hope. 50 to 70,000 men and women were that day supposed to die, but only 3,000 lost their lives from the missiles in the sky. Now every life that is lost is an anguish beyond compare. And many who perished were responders who didn't have to be there. But much worse had been the plan for this fateful day. Tens of thousands did not perish, but all their lives were saved. So let's pause to remember all those who sadly lost their lives. And the grief that hit their families and the tears that filled their eyes. Let's give thanks to the heroes who never stopped to think that they may not survive that day as they rushed into the brink. Let's remember just as well our men and women true who have since gone forth to battle defend both me, to defend both me and you. They have risked their lives daily, and many have given their all to assure our land is safe again and buildings shall not fall. But things could have been much worse on September the 11th, but somehow a guiding hand reached down from the heavens and held up walls and buildings so thousands could escape and lived to tell the whole wide world the horrors they had braved. We pause today to remember the traumas of that day and hour, but we should also give thanks that somehow a higher power was there to stop the evil and hold much of it at bay, so that tens of thousands who should have died are still with us today. We reflect now for a moment to remember those who perished. They should never be forgotten, but their memory always cherished. And we give thanks for our freedoms and our country that endures as a hope for all the nations where all can dwell secure. Thanks be to God for the many miracles of September 11th and time since then that bring us through tragedy and trauma. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your continued grace and mercy in our lives. Fill us with your joy and peace so that we may go forth and shine with the light and love of Jesus, all we need, and break the spell of darkness in the world and bring your joy to all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our closing hymn, which...